hello and welcome. Today is Friday, which can mean only one thing. It is time for your weekly top up of unological nonsense, pulled out for you by myself, Weinbert. This week, I'm talking about something that I consider to be a very exciting part of the wine industry. I think it's something that we've been speaking about for a while, has been around for a long time, but is only just starting to gain the traction that it truly deserves. It's a terrible noise, isn't it? So as a wine merchant, it's really easy to get wrapped up in all of the things that you sell, all the things that you're given as samples to try. And I think one of the really important things uh, to, to sort of try and, you know, make sure that you, you stay with the passion is to constantly be looking for other things. And it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you intend to sell, but something that is just really good that someone else might have come across that you haven't. And I was recommended this by a good friend of mine who's got a killer palette, Tim. And this is actually sold in the beer shop on Hermitage Road in Hitchin. And uh, it was recommended to me, as I say, by, by a friend Tim who I, who I consider to have a very good palette. And I thought, well, I, I need to get around to it. I bought this about two months ago and it's sort of been sat on the shelf. And I thought, well, look, what, um, what better way to talk about amber wine, orange wine, than with something I've actually never tried before. So here it is. This is made with a great variety called Chinuri, which is an indigenous varietal to the Caucasus in Georgia. Now, Georgia have been making wine for, I mean, 8,000 plus years, a very, very long time. And one of the things they're very famous for is the quavery. And the quavery is a clay amphora that is lined with beeswax. And what they do is they pump everything in, all the grapes, all the stems, all the seeds, all the skins, everything. And they let that sort of just ferment naturally as possible. And under the ground too, they normally bury those under. I think the ESOP is that it's, it's um, as much a part as Mother Earth as you've taken out, you're putting back in. And I think it's a fascinating way of, of, making, of making wine. And they always end up really quite quirky. Orange wine, I look at the colour of that, I mean, is exactly what it says on the tin. It isn't to be confused with wine that's made of oranges. Uh, instead, it's white grape varietals. Oh, the smell is amazing. It's a white grape varietal and what they do is they leave it in contact with the skin for a little bit longer. And obviously what that does is not only draws out that lovely colour, but it also gives a lot more texture to the wine. So I often consider orange to be a white wine that's made in the same style as a red. So generally speaking, they tend to have a little bit more tannin, natural tannin that is, tannin that's not given to it through uh, any form of sort of oak aging. It's all completely natural. And because of that, they have an element of viscosity, of texture around the, the teeth and the gums that ordinary whites don't have. And I think that gives them a real versatility with food. Uh, I've not obviously tried this one before, but most recently I had an orange wine and I opened it over two days. And on the Saturday I had it with uh, a curry, which is a wonderful pairing, works really well. And then the following, I had it with a really delicate sort of monkfish prosciutto wrapped with, you know, like a soft salad. And again, worked really well. It's one of those great styles, I should say, not grapes. It's one of those styles where I think you could almost pop it up against anything and it would do really well. So, yeah, a very, very exciting style. Look at the legs on this particular one. You'll see them slowly start to drip down very slowly indeed. And um, not to be confused with the level of alcohol, it's actually only 13%. On the nose, it's beautiful. It's uh, almost sort of like slightly cooked pear. It's very peachy. There's a very light marmalade-like character. Um, you know, not sort of confected in any way. It's still quite fresh. Beautifully aromatic. These sorts of wines as well, I think because of the style, I wouldn't necessarily serve them overly chilled. We have a rule um that we always sort of give to our customers with with these styles of whites or certainly whites that are slightly more robust and round is chill it don't kill it so you don't want it necessarily fridge cold you want it slightly warmer than that i'd probably even pop this in a decanter ah. 
beautifully fresh on the palate. There's this slight cooked apple note, ever so slightly cidery, but with this gorgeous undertone of pear drop. It is really peachy. Where I say about the orange and the, and the orange wines and those tannin structures, it's ever so slightly fuzzy, almost like a peach skin with those little notes to it as well. I mean, really um, a stunning, stunning wine that they say, you know, comes from inside the womb of the earth, which I think is a really nice way of putting it. Yeah. I mean, I, as I say, I would probably decant this and let it warm up even more than it has done at the moment, but an absolutely gorgeous wine. Texturally, that finish is so long, I can still taste it now. So yeah, if you've never tried an orange wine before, it doesn't necessarily have to be this one, but I would highly, highly recommend it. I think for, for red wine drinkers that aren't necessarily, you know, sort of keen on drinking white, an orange wine is a great sort of uh, way into that because texturally they're quite similar. They can be quite similar. They don't necessarily need to be served completely chilled and you're not looking at that real sort of tartness in terms of the level of acidity. Just a really, really good glass of wine. So yeah, get to your wine merchants, try yourself some orange stuff. Thanks for the recommendation, Tim.